Good evening, this is Jason Horak. It is July 13th, 2012, and I'm just going to give you a little bit of an update on the 87 Dodge Daytona electric vehicle. Um, specifically, what we're going to talk about today is DC to DC converters. And uh, as you may be able to tell, we have upgraded um, or changed over to this Chinook DC to DC converter uh, that takes up a lot less room. Um, and so it's right here, and it perf performs the function of an alternator that charges the little 12 volt accessory battery and provides power to the 12 volt systems um, when the car is running. Uh, actually, it provides 12 volt power all the time because there's no switch on it, it's just on. Um, so it's constantly draining from the main battery pack um, into this unit. Um, the way I have it hooked up is there's a little plug that uh, straight down in here. So this is a standard, um, like a monitor power plug. And then on this end, we have like a regular computer power plug. Um, so that's hooked right into the, the high voltage line, negative and positive here. And uh, just kind of plug it in. So, um, so once we do that, a little bit of a pop as it connects and we are golden okay so what that's doing is it's now providing um, about 13 and a half volts out of this to charge the little accessory battery and so forth um, this little box down here you can kind of see it is a it's just a, just a regular um, like outlet box with a waterproof seal on it and a little foam in there and what that does is that has the uh, the diode and the um, capacitor that uh, Jack had originally uh, glued onto this unit here, um, but I just kind of didn't like having it exposed. Those high voltage things just kind of out here where it could touch stuff. I was like, no, nah, let's go ahead and put it right in a little box there and um, make it weatherproof um, and, and such. Uh, as you can see, my shunt box is not actually attached. It's just kind of laying in here, but it's held by these big beefy cables and it's not going to fall out or anything. Um, at some point I might secure it down, but it's nice to keep it mobile so I can get at the cabling underneath it and uh, and all that good stuff. Um, you also might notice this big <laughs> uh, bunch of wires come in here. This is the, the main ground for the car. Uh, so this is grounded to the body of the car and uh, to the 12 volt system and it's connected right here to the um, negative of the battery. So pretty much all of the main systems come into that point and so they touch both the car body as well as um, you know get, get to the negative of the battery. Uh, so that's all for the 12 volt system um, and that's kind of all there is to it. Uh, I'll just show you real quick uh, how it was set up before. So this was the Vicor Megapack um, that I was using as a DC to DC converter up to this point and uh, it's kind of an interesting little unit. It's a computer power supply um, from like a server type of thing, and it has these little modules that uh, you know just kind of slide in here, and you can custom tailor the kind of output you want to get out of it. Um, these are five volt modules. There's a driver and a booster, so it's a pair, and each one of them is capable of five volts, 40 amps uh, output. So by wiring them in parallel, you get 5 volts, 80 amps. And then wiring these in series with each other, these pairs, um, we end up with a total of 15 volts at 80 amps, um, which is quite a lot of power for a DC to DC converter. I've not seen anything that's even close to that uh, on the market, but um, you know, as, as like a finished product. Uh, so anyway, so it, it's a great little unit. It does a wonderful job. Um, the problem is that it is, in fact, a computer power supply. Um, and so it has a fan, a big old computer fan that uh, keeps the unit cool and uh, is very loud, unfortunately, um, but also has a tendency to kind of suck water in and blow water through all the insides of it so it really can't get wet um, 
And uh, in fact, I've lost one of these units when I went through a car wash and it sucked in some water and fried itself. Um, so anyway, uh, they're not really well suited for a car unless you can find a, you know, a more secure location to put them than, you know, I had mine right up in here, uh, which was fairly well protected, but it did get splashed with water in, in the car wash and took it out. So anyway, I, I was looking for a better solution that was more sealed. Um, so anyway, the wiring on this was pretty simple. Uh, this is just like we had in the car there. Uh, this is the high voltage input, positive and negative. Um, and for this unit, because it's a computer power supply, you can actually hook this up to a regular um, computer cable and plug it into the wall and it will power your systems and it'll put out 14.8 14, 14 volts, give or take uh, 80 amps from an AC source as well. Um, so anyway, that's wired in right here to this contactor. Uh, so the idea is that you can turn off this whole unit by tripping this contactor and um, it'll be quiet and not make the uh, loud fan and uh, not drain your battery pack. This side contactor um, is actually wired in, um, usually the positive is wired in right here to the, this terminal. Um, and then the other positive line here would go into your to your car, to your positive system in the car. Um, that contactor, basically its purpose is to, to make sure that your accessory battery doesn't get drained through this unit um, while it was off. Because I found that um, because this is non, a non-isolated uh, unit, that the battery would just drain right through it and you'd come back with a dead accessory battery in the morning. So I had to have another switch for that side. Um, so this way when you uh, removed power to here, um, both contactors would trip or would shut off and you would, this would turn off and no power would go back from the main battery, um, or from the accessory battery rather. Uh, so anyway, so it was, it was a whole complicated system, worked really well, put out a lot of power, um, but I was just concerned with it getting wet, and it was very loud. So <laughs> anyway, so this is the new setup, a lot simpler, and uh, hopefully it will be good. Um, so what we're going to do now is a quick test, just to show you some an interesting thing about this new Chinook unit. And uh, so we're just going to go ahead and... Just turn on the key so that the dashboard comes up, and we'll take a look at the the power. So we're showing like right in the dead center, um, pretty much just right at 13.5. Um, it's very good at putting out the power that it claims, at least when there's not a lot going on. Um, so, in fact, let's go ahead and test that um, just for fun. Put the meter on it. Um, and one thing you may notice is the sound. Note how it's hissing. So, I'm not sure if that's normal or not. It really doesn't sound good. But, uh, hopefully it won't uh, cause me a, a problem. Uh, so anyway, we're going to stick the, the meter on here. And, uh, you'll see that we are at tricky to do with one handed with all the camera. Okay, so it's showing 13.6 volts. Um, 13.68 technically. And, uh, you know, it's relatively stable. So that's all good. Um, so that's, uh, but I'm a little concerned about the hissing sound that seems to be coming from this thing. And, uh, that's what just the load of the dashboard being turned on um, and the soliton technically is also on at this point. Um, so, let's go ahead and give it a little more to think about. How about we turn on the headlights? So, with the headlights on, this device is putting out now 13.5 volts, um, but again, holding pretty steady, so that's not too bad. And the hissing is less, or at least has changed pitch. So, I'm not sure what that's all about, but we'll 
we'll go with it. All right, next thing we're gonna do is let's turn on the dome light in the car, which seems to give it a lot of a lot of battery power there. Um, and so all that's pretty much fine. Now we're gonna turn on the um, blower fan for the, the frost. So that unit is quite loud, um, so we can't tell about the hissing too, so much. Um, but we can go ahead and see that we're at 13.29 volts. So it really hasn't dropped too much. Um, and with all that stuff going on, we got the headlights on and the blower chugging. Um, so now we're going to really punish this little DC DC converter by turning on the power steering column. Power steering pump is really loud and obnoxious. Hard to hear over the uh, blower fan, to be honest. But uh, so take the fan on there. So that kicks us down to 12.2 uh, volts, and I think dropping. Um, yeah, so it, it, it's definitely draining the accessory battery at this point. Um, so with these three things on the. Uh, little DC to DC converter can't keep up enough to keep the, the uh, accessory battery charge and then we'll just continue to drop. Um, so it's not a, a lot, but if you're driving down the road and you got these three systems on, expect your accessory battery to run out uh, or at least get to a point where you're you know, having trouble maintaining 12 volts. Um, kind of annoying. Uh, that might actually cause the, the soliton to kick out and be a problem. So time will tell. I'll keep uh, keep an eye on it. And I'll turn off the fan blower. And we can just hear the incredibly obnoxious power steering pump. Strain it a little bit. You can see that it's just killing the voltage. We're actually getting a, uh, actually a check gauge light, uh, which means that it's below, I think, 11 volts. Um, and again, you know, we're in the garage, and that's like kind of a maximum strain on that thing. But uh, it's still a little bit scary that it can't quite keep up. Um, and so, again, without the blower fan on, just the power steering pump, it's holding better. Uh, that blower fan just really kills it. Um, and uh, just for reference, um, as far as what voltage we're running at, let's see if I can get this on here with holding the camera and dancing a jig. So we were at 177.7 volts currently, um, and there you go. So the power steering pump is loud and obnoxious. DC to DC converter does work, but makes a weird hissing noise. Um, and we're gonna turn off that uh, lights and power steering, just because that's really loud. And then we can go in here the scary hissing again. So, I don't know what's making that noise. Um, I mean, or why. It is quite hot. Um, I don't think I have a temperature probe here handy. Um, but, uh, yeah. I don't have anything that temperature uh, looking at the different set of probes but um, it's notably hot to the touch uh, I can't really keep my hand on there very long without having to remove it um, you know it is 80 degrees here in central New York today so it's not cool by any means but that makes me very nervous <laughs> leave it and uh, hope that uh, there's not a problem. 
Anyway, have a good night. I will catch up with y'all later.